Durban, South Africa. In the heat of the African summer, UN delegates gather in an air-conditioned conference hall for the 2011 climate change negotiations. In a big gray room full of diplomats, the Canadian Environment Minister prepares to make a speech about why Canada has chosen to leave the Kyoto Protocol, previously the world's best hope for a global, legally binding climate agreement. He begins a speech but is interrupted by a small commotion in the back of a room where the NGOs have been given a few seats. Six young Canadians have stood up and silently turned their backs on the minister. Their t-shirts read, turn your back on Canada, and their faces are grim and decisive. Chaos ensues, the security guards are brought in to escort the youth away and strip them of their conference badges, but the environment minister is thrown off and is forced to reschedule a press conference for later in the day to explain to the media exactly why members of his own country chose to turn their back on him and on Canada's stance on climate change. We are the youth of today. Born as the era of globalization dawned, we have been the recipients of its gifts as well as the witnesses of its mistakes. And the story I just told you is just one of the ways in which we are transforming our global political system. What I'd like to do with you today is to step back and shine a light on my generation. We are poised at a moment of transition in history that is completely unique. Globalization has brought with it both problems of an unprecedented planetary scale, but it's also given us unique tools with which to tackle those problems. It's true that youth have always felt like they're on the crest of a wave of change, but today, the crises we are facing are, defy any of the expectations and are of a nature that our parents' generations never had to deal with. Sustainable development and climate change are now on the world's radar, and they're just a couple of the issues that are going to require a significant, sustained, and profound effort from the entire global community to address. And as a youth who's working in the realm of international environmental politics, I've dedicated my academic and personal journey to understanding the core of these issues. And just like youth throughout history, when my peers and I attempt to call our leaders out for their lack of action, we are accused of being radical. But let's unpack this notion of radical. If we go back to the beginnings of the word, radical comes from the Latin root. When a seed releases its first root, it's called the radical. But what has this word come to mean in today's society and in our politics? In the popular usage, to be radical means to be extreme. It means you support politically either the extreme right or the extreme left, usually the left. It is a word that has come to clash with progress, to signal the end of discussion, and to immediately cause politicians to stop listening. But what if we could re-examine this word and what it means to the current generation of youth? As young people stepping out of our optimistic university bubbles and encountering the world for what it is, our participation in the politics of the system could go in one of two directions. So we could try to affect change within the existing channels, or we could go further and begin to demand system change from every corner of the globe, diving into the roots of a problem and tackling those instead of the branches and leaves that distract us. I'm a student at the College of the Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs> And COA is an institution that nurtures us and empowers us to do just that, to dive down to the roots of a problem and to question them through interdisciplinary learning. What I've found in the course of my education there so far is that the underlying values and principles of our global political system no longer work for the problems at hand. Climate change, environmental degradation, economic inequity, these are multi-layered, multilateral problems that can't be fixed with the same thinking that created them. What we have on our hands now is a system so fundamentally broken that it is completely ill-fitted to deal with today's ultra-complex conundrums. And it's no longer providing us with health, meaning, or happiness. Where did this idea come from? that a group of 10 people in an office could dictate the lives of millions of others? Where did the idea come from that corporations can have more legal rights than people? And where did this idea come from that the earth is ours to be manipulated, bracketed, and packaged with a price tag? 
stemming from the European legacy of the Enlightenment, ideas of man's dominion over nature and the hierarchy of some people over others are ideas that have permeated all levels of society through space and time to the point where we no longer think about them, but rather accept them as the status quo. And these ideas, these anthropocentric, human-centered ideas, have informed the missions, methods, and decision-making processes of our social and financial institutions, which in turn are the ones that make large-scale decisions regarding development, growth, and billions of people's lives and livelihoods. As engaged youth dive down to the roots of the system we see around us, we find that the roots are rotten. Moving through this academic project, I have all these questions rolling around in my head. We're a generation in turmoil, but I find that all the questions we're faced with actually boil down to just one. How do we uproot old concepts and plant new healthy ones? The youth, engaged youth today, are plugging into a state of global transition in which the non-profit world and non-state actors are becoming a force to be reckoned with. The aim of this movement of people working for a better world is simple. We want a decisive and definite move away from the Enlightenment era's man's dominion over nature and towards a sense of humility, respect, and integration with the earth and with the biological resources that sustain us. When considering building a pipeline, for example, we want consideration of all aspects, environmental, social, and economic. When we consider which industries to invest in, we want our leaders to divest from fossil fuels. And when we try to negotiate a global climate treaty, we want climate justice and the inclusion of future generations, our children and their children, as equal stakeholders in the game. What we want is an integration of people, the environment, and political ideology. Equity now and equity for future generations. These things are not mutually exclusive. If this is what it means to be radical, good. We can, aim, we can afford to aim for no less. I'm committed to a future that is radically different from this world that I'm living in today. And in my vision for this future, we have an evolved understanding of what it means to be human, of what it means to cooperate and to move our species to new levels of compassion, fulfillment, and meaning. I am also determined to help explode the traditional narrative of business as usual and see what new thing we can create in its wake. The point we have arrived at today is that the radical must become the status quo. And if you take anything away, I hope that you take away that. Because in today's world, it is no longer extreme to call for a more holistic and integrated way of looking at people's relationships with each other and with our natural environment. And it's no longer extreme to call for a new type of decision making at all levels of society. Scientific systems theories attempt to explain how dynamic systems emerge out of what appear to be complete chaos and how huge changes in these systems can come about through small perturbations at the fringes of the system. Small voices calling out, many small acts of dissent these will come together to create that dynamic systems change we're after. And that change will spread to the core and reintroduce some notion of values and of principles into our global political system. This is the dream that I and other like-minded youth are working towards. And we have the tools of globalization, the internet, and the power of the media narrative to help us get there. So this generation that's known by many to be indulgent and entitled actually does have some pockets of passion and determination. A small group of opinionated youth with a healthy dose of skepticism is the unit of social change today. And I'm privileged to be working with one such group. Earth in Brackets is a project of the College of the Atlantic. In political texts, brackets denote pieces of the text that are contested or unable to be agreed upon. We are a group of youth who enter the fray of international environmental negotiations and try to shed some light upon their inner workings. We are a radical youth voice speaking out about climate change and other issues through the lens of equity and intergenerational responsibility. And actually, as we speak right now, 
Earth in Brackets is back at College of the Atlantic hosting an international youth conference where we're bringing together youth from all over the world to start collaborating towards our meaningful engagement in the next climate change negotiations. This is our change. This is our small act of dissent. And this is our commitment to the world and to future generations. It's happening right now. So look for us in the hallways of environmental negotiations doing policy work and striving to understand the complexity of these issues. And look for us in those same halls doing other things. We are engaging, we're learning, we're pushing, we're pulling, we're getting rebuffed and we're coming back strong and slowly but surely we're getting there. When we enter a political space and we transform it through small radical acts and when we symbolically turn our backs on a fundamentally flawed system what we're actually doing is weeding the world of its old destructive roots and planting our own seeds that will release deep roots, deep radicals into the future. I believe, College of the Atlantic believes, and I really want you to believe that another world is possible. Thank you.